So, after watching my character guide videos and playing the hit game Eternal Return, free on Steam by the way, you noticed that my last two videos involved skill amp characters with skill shots and funny mechanics and thought, man, fuck all that, I just wanna right click people. To which I say, god me too. Well, you're in luck, because the next fella that I'll be prattling on about in your ear is an attack power brick house that goes by the name of Marcus. Now before you jump in and start wrecking hell on everyone, you should probably figure out how to play him first. Now this leads me to my usual disclaimer of admitting that I am a dookie gamer who plays this game casually and does not know how everything works. Which, by extension, means I don't know how to play Marcus optimally. Also, I'm assuming you know terms like skill amp or weapon mastery, etc. But I can still try and help you understand him better to some degree at least. So, uh, welcome. Allow me to try and help you understand how to play Marcus. Alright. Let's start off boring and begin with stats and weapons. For stats, Marx's more prominent numbers are obviously his indomitable spirit, boasting pretty high HP and defense, so he's naturally just tanky as is. In terms of weapons, Marcus can carry either an axe or a hammer. To summarize the rough difference between the two weapons besides their scaling, Axe Marcus makes for a really beefy tank that is just too angry to die. Wait, you know what? Crouchy's actually killing them! All that. Albeit he's gonna have to rely on his team to actually finish the job. Hammer Marcus, on the other hand, is a psychopath. With the abilities Hammer Marcus has in his kit, he can work as an all-in assassin that can and will kill someone who's all on their own. Otherwise though, he can also die just as fast because of the lack of an axe skill and other items to keep him going. But uh, just between you and me, that's not really gonna stop. <laughs> Alright, that's his stats and weapons out of the way. Let's skip the flavor text and move on to his skills. Marcus's passive allows him to rattle enemies after using some of his skills in a certain way. If an enemy is rattled, Marcus can leap towards that enemy and deal some serious damage when he lands. The leap has pretty big range and it can go over walls, Otherwise, though, the passive doesn't really do anything on its own, and it's basically just there to allow Marcus to follow up on his CC. How do you rattle someone? Well, the conditions are different for each skill that can, so I'll go over them when they're brought up. His Q enhances the next three basic attacks, which do a few things. Each of said swing has a big boost of attack speed, deals substantially more damage than usual, and heals Marcus for each of the three swings. It also gives you a short movement speed boost towards enemies when you cast it. The skill will expire once you have spent all three of your swings, or when you haven't swung in a while. As you have guessed, you're gonna be using this skill constantly. Its cooldown is short, and Marcus's basic attacks without it aren't really impressive, so if you have a target and it's off cooldown, turn it on. Marcus's W slams the ground in front of him in the direction of your choice, damaging anyone caught and launches them airborne. On its own, it does just that. Hits and airborne's whoever got hit. But this skill can utilize Marcus's passive if you combine it with his ult, which we'll go over soon enough. Speaking of his passive though, Marcus's E charges him forward a decent distance, which can stop abruptly if you collide with a wall or an enemy. If you collide with an enemy, you'll knock them back away from you. This may sound bad at first, but listen to this. If said enemy gets knocked into a wall, or even another player, they get rattled. Remember the first time I mentioned rattle? That there is your passive asking to be used. Marcus's E is gonna be your primary way to rattle enemies and actually make use of your passive. Though, you're gonna need to be mindful of your environment, so you can send them into a wall or into their friends. Wow! Incredible! Axe's weapon skill lets Marcus spin forward a bit dealing damage and getting a pretty good heal off of said damage. This heal actually gets stronger if you hit more people with the skill, so group fights will keep you going in no time. Hammer's weapon skill lets you slam the ground in front of you. Anyone caught in the slam will lose a bit of their defense alongside damaging them. So whatever follow-up damage they get next will hurt a lot more. And finally, his ult, or R. Marcus leaps forward and slams the ground when he lands, leaving a huge mark on the floor that stays there for a few seconds. Besides hurting like a b anyone hit by the ult will also suffer a strong slow for a bit. CCing anyone that's inside the mark that you left on the floor will also rattle them. E will rattle regardless if they get pushed into something, hell you can even push them into the mark and it rattles, and W will not only airborne your enemies, but also launch them behind you alongside rattling them. Bear in mind though that you can only get a free rattle like this once, so make the most of it. A uh, small side note that I forgot to add in the script because I totally wasn't rushing this or anything. Uh, uh, the ult lets you leap over walls too, so uh, you can do the uh, the trademark Marcus jump scare, 
which uh, can be funny sometimes. If that still doesn't sound too good, every rattle you do will lower the cooldown of your ult by 3 seconds. So if you're proactive with your wall splats, you can ult again much sooner. I have to admit, I may have thrown a little too much information all at once there, and I apologize. But that's about all of Marcus's skills roughly explained. Now that I've explained what our modern day Viking can do, let's see how we can put all of this into a real match. Now that I have you at the loadout screen, it's time to choose between hammer and axe, since one weapon lets you play Marcus a lot differently from the other. As I've mentioned before, if you want to just endure and be the greatest tank to ever exist, pick the axe. If you want to show off your true Viking heretics and burst the unbelievers, pick hammer. Can you guess which one I like? One thing to note is that regardless of the weapon that you pick, you're gonna want some attack power and a lot of HP items, as that's what most of your skills scale with. One other thing that's also worth noting is that besides his Q, all of his skills have a pretty noticeable startup before they actually become active, which can throw you off a bit, but nothing too awful. Anyways, once you pick one of the weapons, you're gonna wanna grab a loadout that would complement the weapon. For example, Hammer Marcus would want items that are more towards damage and, hell, maybe even cooldowns, as you're gonna be the first guy to jump into a fight and start pushing people around and swinging a kill. You're not that strong of a tank with Hammer, so don't try to act like one and just pick someone, see red, and annihilate. In short, Hammer Marcus is better at killing the enemy than protecting his team. This one requires a bit more effort on your end than Axe. And speaking of which, Axe Marcus is the complete opposite. You are a tank tank. You're gonna see a squad of three and think, I'm gonna jump in between all three of these guys and live to tell the tale. You'll deal damage every now and then, but your main priority is gonna be making sure the rest of your team is alive enough to dish the rest of the damage. If you're gonna target somebody, target the folks who are after your squishies. You're gonna use your abilities mostly just to disrupt and displace, rather than hurt and kill. Though, you're free to do both, I ain't your boss. Most of your damage is, funnily enough, gonna come from items that burn nearby enemies or reflect damage back, and sometimes your Q. But, like I said before, your teammates are gonna do all the killing. So why not join them and- Ow! What? No, oh, come on, you know Axe Marks is bullshit, you can get away- <clears throat> As I was saying, your teammates are gonna do the killing, so you just... Keep- keep them alive. Hmm. In short, Axe Marcus is better at protecting his team than... Uh... No, no, you know, no, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done pretending like I know what I'm doing. You wanna play Marcus and do whatever you want with him? Go for it. You can get away with it regardless of what weapon you use. You wanna kill people with Axe Marcus? Go for it. This passive literally lets you leap at people. How do you not see red after that? You wanna just ambush some poor son of a bitch or just breathing the same air as you? Go nuts. They won't see it coming. Wanna tank with Hammer Marcus? You still can. But do it anyway because fuck meta. Why be optimal when you can play as a giant brick shithouse of a character with a big axe or hammer and just beeline for the nearest prick and game end them? What are they gonna do? Kill me? Was that? The Marcus mates are coming after me for making it sound like Marcus is a simple and very ungabunga? Let them come! I'd like to see them go through all these heels and shields, bitch! And besides that, that's the whole goddamn point of this series. To talk about characters in almost layman terms with a bit of bullshit in the middle, like what I'm doing now! In short, play Marcus however damn well you please, because he's got the bullshit to get away with it. Kill your enemies, save your team, and as long as you do both, you'll be unstoppable! Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. Hmm. I, I guess I guess while I'm here, I might as well admit that I wasn't exactly planning to do anything with you. You just kind of happened out of sheer boredom. I don't know. I guess I guess I got a little too ambitious. I mean, if I wanted to do something spooky and ARG-like, I could just go back to my audio logs. Actually, that's not a bad idea.